to talk about some things again I feel from my experience they're very useful to me they may or may not be useful to you as the case may be uh, but in order to uh, use these uh, there, there are many ways to use these shortcuts in the Windows world you can use your mouse uh, you can type in things uh, you can do a search and find or you can use shortcut keys. Now, the shortcut keys are not simply relegated to the Alt key and the Control key, but there's this Windows logo key that is used for some of these shortcuts. And there are 26 letters of the alphabet. It doesn't mean you have to know all 26 shortcuts. You pick and choose uh, which ones are of interest to you. I'm gonna show you a few of them. And um, I know John Stample has used this quite a bit. He's used that with projecting to another monitor uh, with the Windows key and the letter P. But uh, when, when you're using this as a shortcut, and as I'm using it tonight, it has some very practical use for presentations. Rather than have just my my Zoom and everything into one window, what I've done is I've created what we call virtual desktops or multiple desktops or workspaces. doesn't matter what you call it, but it's like a, a separate area so that you can segregate, let's say, if we're in a Zoom meeting and in another section of your computer called a desktop, you can have um, something you're really working on, a spreadsheet or some, you're typing a word processor or you're just on the internet or whatever. You can segregate them by these desktops. Now to initiate them in the Windows world, you first press that Windows logo key and I didn't have a picture of the Windows logo key. So I use the uh, symbols, here, the icon here of two windows. And then you hold, you hold this down and you tap the tab key. So if you do that now, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm not gonna see your screen, but let's see what happens if you do that. So you find the key, good. If you don't find the key, yell or raise your hand or ask Drew or say something. But if you press the, the Windows key and then the tab key, you should get some options either at the top of your screen, but more likely at the bottom of your screen to choose a desktop yep. or to create a desktop. Good evening, Lou. Yeah, hi. No, I'm, I'm looking, I, I usually use that a lot because immediately I get a menu of all the things that I usually uh, use on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but in addition, as you, as you work, use um, Excel or Word, it also begins to build a, uh, a, a list of the recent programs that you're working on. But you can see uh, Edge, Excel, PowerPoint, Mail, Calendar, Microsoft, Settings, which is very good, Microsoft 365, and, then, and then the whole, the, the whole uh, thing of uh, it's, uh, it's very good. I like that. Okay, so this is what I've, what I've done. I've, I put my Zoom in, into one window and I have my PowerPoint. I'm sharing the screen and, and PowerPoint is in another desktop, not another window, but actually another desktop. So I can switch, I can switch very quickly back and forth between the Zoom mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I can also go to my desktop which uh, will be coming up, but that that's the beginning. That's only the beginning. Anybody have any problems doing the the, the Windows key and the Tab key to get the, the picture of the uh, of the menu. desktop? <laughs> and in Windows no, no. in Windows eleven, you can name the desktops. In Windows ten, you could not rename the desktops. So I I have my desktops named for Zoom and for Windows 10. Uh, so you can name them and, and know which one is which and you can switch 
amongst them. They're not persistent though. That is, once you turn your machine off, as far as I know, those desktops are gone. Now, I sent out a, a, a reminder of the meeting, and in it, I put a link to uh, where you will get a list of all those combinations. But I'm just going to show you some of the highlights tonight. Hey, Fred. Yes, sir. I, Andy. I just, I just threw uh, one of the things I, on the Windows virtual desktops. I don't use the Windows tab you know, to see it and then add one. Quickie, control Windows, and then a right arrow. You go right to the next one. That's correct. You can switch. You can switch. Once once you create them, you can switch. Now, yeah, I don't even bother creating it. Now there there are some there's there are some other ones here that uh, again I've had club members use them. I've been aware of of uh, the Windows logo key and the letter E for Explorer. That'll get you right to the Windows Explorer. So just give that a quick try, everybody. Hold down the, that Windows key and E and see if it comes up with Windows Explorer. And that's my Windows Explorer. Okay. That's, yeah, this is Windows 11, by the way. And it's a to, it should be a toggle, uh, meaning that if I do it a second, no, if I do it a second time, that, that one's not a toggle. That opens up another ex, case of Explorer. Sorry about that. Some of these are toggles, meaning you turn them on, you turn them off, and some of them are, are just going to create another instant. This next one I've demonstrated once before. When, uh, of course, nobody remembers. It seems like ages when Windows 11 first came down the pike. And that's the Windows logo key and the letter H, which is voice dictation. Now it's going by various names. It's called uh, voice dictation, speech dictation, voice typing. Um, very, very handy. So let's see if I can get this guy to work. And for that, um, let me go to Microsoft Office. Let me see if this will open Microsoft Office. Uh, Okay, um, I'm not sure, this is now uh, a version, this is the free version of Office 365. And um, let's see if this works. So I'm gonna do the Windows key and the letter H. And yes, it pops up. So now is the time for all good men and women to come to the aid of their party and to attend the Windows workshop of BCUG. Now, all I can say is that it's become better and better uh, because when I found a need to do this kind of thing, especially from my iPad, we're not talking about Windows, when we talk about the iPad, uh, I, I found that I had to do a lot of spe uh, spell correction. And now, as I see and I'm talking, it does a pretty darn good job of doing the, uh, uh, the typing and the correct spelling. And it's not perfect, but, you know, it can save you a lot of time. Now, I just found that a situation I was in, I, I couldn't get to my computer, I could get to my iPad, I had to do a lot of dictation. And then when I got to my computer, I said, hey, you know, might as well continue some of this dictation. Uh, but the other side of it now is once you have all of this in your computer and you need to read it back um, in Word, there's a couple ways of doing that in Word, Let's see if I can select it. I don't think they selected one. Let's see. Try a triple click. Uh, it's not letting me select. Yeah, and while he's working on that, the reason that Windows 11 has better voice uh, recognition than Windows 10 
is uh, during the act, uh, development of 11, uh, Microsoft acquired a company called Nuance. And Nuance had acquired previously a company called Dragon Naturally, Naturally Speaking. Speaking. And okay. some of the Dragon Naturally Speaking technology has made its way into Windows 11. I forgot about that because how I got involved with, with this is my neighbor across the street was using Dragon Naturally Speaking. And with one of the Windows upgrades, he lost functionality of that. And he, I said, I, I said, speech recognition is in Windows. And that's how you know, I, I went back to uh, so in Windows by doing the uh, thing that I just demonstrated. Um, to, to speak in the desktop is one way. To have it do it in uh, Windows... 365. I wonder if you can do it in the OneDrive, you know, live version of Word versus the desktop version of Word. The, 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 that's what I'm doing now. This is Office 365. This is a free version of, of Office 365, I think. And I'm looking for immersive reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type it in because I don't know where it's hiding, if it's, if it's here. That's what I was playing around with before. Oh, yes. So, get rid of these. Okay, so. Just hit the play button. Uh, I'm blind to where, oh, here we go. And yes, it pops up. So now is the time for all good and men and women to come to the aid of their party and to attend the Windows workshop at BCUG. Now, all I can say is that it's become better and better because when I found a need to do this kind of thing, especially for my iPad, we're not talking about Windows. When we talk about the iPad, I found that I had to do a lot of spell correction. And now as I see and I'm talking, it does a pretty darn good job of doing the, the typing and the correct spelling. It's not perfect, but... Fred, I think your pants are too tight. <laughs> <laughs> well, grammar too, Ted. Fred, there's no um, punctuation at all. Well, right. that, that's... Act, actually, there is. When when you do the dictation, um, that's right. Let's go back to dictation here. Yeah, uh, you can use para, uh, the period, okay. comma. No, 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 no. You, you, you'll find that uh, it will recognize punctuation, but you can also do things like, uh, let me see, what were we doing? Okay, I'm going to go Windows H. Okay. It's listening. Yeah. Okay. New paragraph. Okay, so you're going to do a new paragraph. What time is it? Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Period. Yeah. yeah, so it will recognize a bunch of stuff, but yeah. I'm a Dragon customer and I have Dragon on 10 and 11. And um, I use that preferably on Windows 10 exclusively. I don't use the Windows 10 voice. But on Windows 11, if I'm doing a chat session with uh, an online support agent, uh, I find it very useful. Okay, you, you, you can uh, find it useful in more than what I've just demonstrated here. And it's a learning process still. Uh, you can add punctuation. Uh, now, in, in the desktop version, it's much easier to do the reading uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't change the spacing. Uh, it, it is a matter of adding an icon to your desktop to have it speak I forget what it's uh, what the name of that icon is but basically it's uh, text to speech if you're looking for something that involves text to speech you add the icon if it's not already on your desktop version and it's much much easier what I've done when I write something is to use that quite a bit because when I type I leave out words I you know something doesn't look right doesn't sound right and I, I listen to it. When I listen to it, I hear things that I did not see when I was just reading it. So I find it very, very useful. Questions or comments? Um, well, another reason that that's useful is because uh, when you're doing the dictation, 
um, unlike when you're typing, uh, the voice recognition is going to spell every word correctly. So it may not put the right word in, but it will put the wrong word in spelled correctly so that when you have it read it back to you, hopefully you'll hear that misspoken word and go and correct it. Any other questions or comments? Uh, comment uh, on Dragon, the Dragon Pools. I believe Mike, probably 10 years ago, well, a long time ago, uh, Mike was doing a lot of work with doctor's offices. And he oh. was uh, talking about, I believe it was Dragon Naturally Speaking, and he was bringing, he was calling to my, or calling to attention the fact that they had add-ons for the medical field and the legal field. Right. Right. And he was using, he was a, I think it was Dragon Naturally Speaking with the medical pack on there. Right. He was yes. talking about being phenomenal, uh, you know, speech to, speech to text. Yes. There, I used to be a Dragon reseller um, and sold the professional version, the medical version, and the legal version. Um, and, um, Yes, the legal version was the most popular. Um, and I did get one question in chat. Um, Fred, you're using the dark theme on Windows? Is that why you're screen uh, looks the way it does? I'm, I'm going to get into that. Yeah, that because that's one of my uh, that's one of my shortcuts. You're very, very aware of things. That's good. Uh, let me get back to my PowerPoint if I can. I guess I have to. That's a feature that Windows 10 doesn't have is a thing called theme, dark and light theme. Okay. Um, okay, that's way, 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 way down here. Okay. Uh, that's that's not one of these Windows logos, but um, we can go there since you 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 brought that up. Uh, and that is, it, it's it's not a easy key combination. And I was thinking that uh, while this is the prescription for high contrast, I'm going to demonstrate that. It's a toggle, which means right now, Drew saw that I was using high contrast because m my eyes are not what they used to be. So yes, I'm using high contrast. I'll, I'll show you what it is without high contrast. But the key combination I wanted to point out is Alt, the left shift, and print screen, a god awful combination. And if you're blind and you, and you can't see the keys on the keyboard, that just adds to the problem. But I was thinking because of the guys in the Linux workshop, uh, Bruce Fowler was talking about renaming a, a, a key combination or something utilizing one of the function keys. I see no reason why somehow I could utilize a function key to substitute for this, um, this awful key combination. But right now, I'm going to demonstrate it. Okay, Robert Francis, Bob Francis is coming in. Okay. Right now, I'm just going to demonstrate it by holding down the Alt the left shift and the print screen key I'm going to be turning off the high contrast. And what does that do? Yep, that changed. Okay. You're full screen with that, so we can't see the, the uh, change. Yeah, yeah. So, but but here here is here it is without the high contrast. Okay, so this is this is uh this is a OneDrive screen. Now, if I turn it back on with high contrast, let's see what happens. Alt, left shift and print screen. It says, do you want to turn on high contrast? Improves readability of display by applying a special system, a special color scheme. The keyboard shortcuts are turned on high contrast to press the left shift, left alt and print screen. So I'm going to say yes. And it darkens the screen and makes the uh, the font stand out. So this is a lot easier on my 
it's actually on Windows 10 also, Drew. Right. So this is, well, this is different from, I didn't realize you were using contrast rather than um, light mode and dark mode. Well, yeah, I thought you pointed out that you thought I was on high contrast. And this, this high contrast. Well, no, somebody yeah. put in chat asking why your screen was dark. Um, and I just assumed that you were using in Windows 11 the dark theme that nope, you can set. No, no. Yeah, what you're using, what you're using is high contrast. I'm using it because of my eyes. Is that just yes, Apple? Yeah, the thing is that you're showing things that don't look like most of the participants screens okay now because they're now dark they do. now they do okay yeah and okay. so and so if if it were helpful to them they could do that too but right. it's like well gee what he's showing me doesn't look like mine i i, I just forgot to turn it off john no biggie okay so this this is without the high contrast and the other just darkens the screen makes it easier to read, especially, uh, you know, especially at night. Um, yeah. If you're using the computer for a long period of time, uh, it, uh, the computer does take a toll on your eyes. So okay. that's and, the contrast screen. And for, for those of you who have, go ahead. Yeah, and for those of you who um, haven't made the investment or are about to get new glasses, um, I purchased my latest pair with a blue light filter in it. I and, have blue light filter on it too. And I, I enjoy that much better than a plain lens. Def, definitely, definitely makes an improvement. Absolutely. So, um, I can think of a disadvantage for the dark screen. What would that be? Sometimes if you're displaying colors like red, green, or brown, and black, uh, different shades, it's hard to pick it out on a black screen. For yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, if you're doing, you know, you're doing a lot of uh, photography, so you would, you know, you would want to work with the uh, natural lighting, of course. But as far as the kind of stuff that I'm doing, and you know, I'm doing a lot of uh, text, or if I'm doing spreadsheets. Uh, there, there are some cases where I'm doing spreadsheets where it's actually more difficult because when you look at the formulas on a dark screen, uh, it, it's actually more difficult than if I use a normal screen. I think there are different schemes of the high contrast. I, I'm showing the extremes here, but I think you can set up uh, different levels of intensity. It doesn't have to be uh, dark intensity. Okay, um, so where do I want to go? Okay, so this is the way it will be without the dark screen. But I did, when I recorded this, I did put it on a, I w was recording a dark screen. Okay, so this screen here has the shortcuts, I think, uh, you might be interested in um, what you might want to do, folks, is to do a screenshot. Um, how would you do a screenshot if you wanted to copy these to your computer? During a Zoom meeting, if you just press print screen, I was it'll take a... To everybody except Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want people to think, Drew. So, sorry, I, I sorry I missed. It, it, it's uh, been a long been a long time since we've had you know Windows an interactive Windows workshop. So um, yeah, Drew is correct. If you simply press the print screen and you make a a copy to your clipboard, you can then go to a graphics program like Paint and paste it. Uh, you can go elsewhere and probably paste it. You can also use the snipping tool. Um, some of you are already using the snipping tool uh, that is also using the Windows logo key. I have it at the very bottom, Shift S, Windows and Shift S. And what you can do is you can uh, draw a rectangular shape or you can do 
I think this is full screen. But that's a window, and then a full window, screen is the next one. Full screen, yeah. Yep. So you you have. Well, I had Fred when I hit print screen on my Windows 11, it automatically comes up to snippet tool. But if I want to do what you're talking about, I have to hit Windows Shift S. It also does the same thing. But if I hit yeah, the Windows I... key and print screen key, it prints the screen. Are right. you talking about the snipping tool or snip and sketch? Because they're two different tools. Snipping tool. Snipping tool was the older one. That Bob was on Fra Windows. Bob That's Francis, when you say that when you hold the Windows key and print screen, it prints the screen. Right. You mean to a printer? No, it just if, prints the screen to to it. It automatically creates. If you don't have a a screenshot folder, it creates a screenshot folder and puts it in there. So it doesn't print it. It saves a copy of the screen. It was confusing because you said it prints it. It saves a copy of the, of the window. Okay, I just did the Windows and the print screen, and on my computer, nothing happened. But I hit, if I hit my print screen key right yeah. now, I get, I I get the, the the snipping tool that has you know the square or you you can whatever shape you want or full screen. It's a, the stuff at the top. Right. And I'm just just, when you're on a um, a Zoom call versus not on a Zoom call. Um, the print screen button will have behave differently. Um, while you're on a Zoom call, it will look for certain keyboard combinations. And during a Zoom call, when you hit print screen, you should see a very momentary flash of your screen. And then it will put a copy of that screen in your picture folder. No, I don't see that. To do that, with I'm on Zoom, I have to hold my Windows key and hit the print screen key, and then I get the flash. Now, remember, if you go into the Zoom in the settings, you can change this behavior. So everybody here Correct. may may have a different you're, behavior you're, you're right, you're right, for the you're shortcuts. Right. Right. So something during a Zoom uh, session may behave differently than it does when you're just using Windows and a browser. And so you may want to take a look, have your Zoom app open and go to the settings and look and see what the shortcuts are in there that take over when you're in a Zoom session. Because otherwise you will get confused by these things. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah this is true about when, when you're doing a Zoom presentation, every, everything that you did without the Zoom, uh, they, have, they have different uh, different rules. They may or may not work as advertised. Fred, is your audio going lower? Say again, Rich? I have a couple of um, other quickie, uh, quick keys, shortcut keys. Well, that we're work short, with we're a shortcut maven, you know. That work with um, window with, with the window key. If you'd want me to uh, express them, okay. That has helped me many times, and that's uh, if you use your shift arrow, left or right, you can break the uh, screen into halves, and an open window will uh, you'll be able to open two windows in a vertical position so if you have an excel and a word or in fact i have the uh the zoom and left side and uh i have my excel spreadsheet of shortcut keys on the right side All right, you have the windows key what the else windows and the right or left arrow Okay, because I'm in a Zoom and I'm checking, nothing is happening. 
So yes, nothing it, happens. It might be it might behave differently when you're in or out of Zoom. Would well, it's working for me now. It's working for you now. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No one can get uh, that. Not here. Plus, in in addition, for those of you uh, who haven't noted, who don't know about it, Microsoft uh, has a product called Power Toys um, uh, that you can load. Coming, coming up, coming up, coming up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll shut up. <laughs> Let, let's hold. Let's hold off on that one a little, little later. But uh, Power Toys is one of those tweaks. If All we, right. If we, I'm curious. No one can can perform that task. Okay, which version? It works, it works on my Windows 10 system right now. Well, it's working on my 11, it's worked on my 10, and it, I think, I don't know, just those two. Richard works fine, works fine on my, my Good, Windows Andy. 10. That's yep. nice. All right. Yeah, I can, I can half the uh, Zoom, and I can half the uh, vertical. No, I'm not, I'm not getting it here. Well, maybe not with... The Zoom. It worked before. Okay. But I'm able to get um, Excel. It's overlapping then. Okay. Okay. Good enough. All right. It, it's something something to try. Something to try. Okay. Um, you can also use the control key with the Windows logo key. If you do control Windows logo and the letter D will create a virtual desktop for you. Control, Windows, and D. T as in Thomas? D as in, D as in dog. Oh, okay. Oh, create yeah, a new, yeah, yeah. Create a new desktop. I saw that. I saw that. Very good. And if you want to switch from one desktop to the other, yes. you do a control, Windows, uh, Either left arrow or yeah, right arrow. Yeah, left or right arrow, correct. Control, <laughs> Windows, and the arrow keys. Switch from desktop to desktop, yes. Right. Very good. Yeah. Either, either forward or backwards. Yes, very good. Now, like I said, uh, these, short, these shortcuts are not something that you must know, but when, when you start to use some of them, you'll find that they're very, very useful. And like I said, there are 26 letters of the alphabet, and then the control with the control key and the alt key. There's probably hundreds of, of shortcuts, and uh, you don't have to know them all. And you shouldn't you shouldn't force yourself to say you know you're missing out on something. It's just when and if you need to do something, uh, there, there are other ways of doing it. And an, an example of that, for example, an example of that, for example, if I do the Windows key and the letter I, I go to, oh, yeah, I go to um, Windows settings. And I may- Question on, question on the virtual desktops. Back, back, hold on, hold on it, Andy, hold on it. I just wanted to point out to you. Um, if I go to, uh, with the Windows key and the letter I, I can get to my system in my system settings, uh, I'm not where I want to be. I am where I want to be. I just can't get there. I can't scroll down. Now, one of the things about these these uh, bigger screen, bigger monitors, I'm having more of a time navigating. We have, a, we have a bigger monitor downstairs here, which I forgot to mention. Because there's so much stuff on it, I have tr trouble navigating to find out where things are. Desktop to the original desktop. Here's what I found. Hey Bob, can you can you hold off for a moment and just just yeah. come, come back to us on it? Okay, uh, I went a, a roundabout way. I eventually got to where I wanted to get to, in terms of uh, Windows key and the letter I, which gets the system settings. And then essentially I had to scroll down to get to about, and it shows, right. me, shows me my uh, uh, Windows specifications and it shows me some of my hardware. Now, that's one way to do it with that shortcut co combination. But also if you're somewhere else, you can find a setting by going to 
type it in. You can search and you can get your settings that way. Or you get different settings that way. Um, you can also search, actually you can search down in this in the uh, taskbar. You can sometimes find things in the taskbar. You can type in the word about there and go right to where you were looking at. Bingo. So, yeah, so the, the point is you do not have to memorize shortcut keys. You can somehow, somewhere, search for it, find a setting, or uh, type in in the search box on the taskbar. Uh, you can also do a shortcut key to your search box, but that search box is, is one of the useful things about searching your computer and the internet. But there are some tweaks out there which will turn off tweaking to the internet. If you just want to search on your computer and not the computer and the internet, uh, there's a tweak to turn that off. But I think by default, it searches both and it comes back with, uh, uh, if it doesn't find something on your computer, it'll find things on the internet, especially if you're looking for a certain app that you may or may not have on your computer. Questions or comments, and then I'll take Andy's, uh, who, who did I say hold off, Andy? I got, I got a question for you. I just did Control Windows D and I went to my desktop but when I have regular desktop and I hit control window D again, it gives me another one. But I'm, I can't get back to the Zoom that we're in. I can hear you guys, but my Windows is my desktop. And every time I hit Windows, control Windows D, it creates another desktop. It just came up, it popped up at the bottom and went away. Desktop 13. I want to get back to the Zoom so I can see your screen. Bob, Bob, it's not a to Bob, it's not a toggle. How can I do it? It's Press and hold the window. Press and hold the Windows key, and then just hold it, and then hit the Tab key. Press what? Press and hold Windows the Windows tab. logo key. Windows then, logo? Yep, the regular Windows logo key of the Start menu key. Okay, and then hit, I hit the and tab. Then hit the tab. Hit the Tab button. Oh, okay, it just showed me a button. along the bottom. I've got thirteen desktops. All right, go to the one that has a Zoom. That's what, what I'm looking for. It right? should no, be no, 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 close the ones that you don't want. Okay, because I can't get it. There's no way to get back. Let me a Windows tab. Okay, window. Oh, there it is. Now the desktop one is the Zoom, and now oh, it okay. says log into the meeting. Go to <laughs> go to thirteen. Uh, okay, Bob. I'm in. I got Bob. it. I'm back to it. Hey. Go to, go to thirteen and close it. There go you to go. Desktop thirteen and close it. No, I, I didn't have to. Well, let me see. I'll try. I'll see if it comes back up again. Windows tab. Windows tab. Oh yeah, I got I got still the bunch here. Okay, I'm gonna close. Yeah, I'm gonna click the X button all the way. I'm gonna click all the yeah. X buttons. Yeah, and I've got 13 right desktop you don't want. Yep, and that's a new desktop which I don't want. So now I'm back. Okay, now now I'm back to the Zoom meeting. <laughs> Great. And Great. I thank you, and I thank you for the lead into my question. Go. Uh, Henry was talking about it. When you're dealing with the virtual desktops and you know, I played around with Linux for years. Uh, there are different Microsoft toys that have been out, not just from Microsoft, but from other companies with virtual desktop. The one thing that seems to be missing, or I don't know if there's a setting anywhere, you can't uh, put up, like on, on Linux, you have workspaces. You can put it on the taskbar, and you can see that you have four of them available. And you can click back and forth, you can rename them. Um, is there any way to make make all your Windows virtual desktops visible, say on the taskbar, or to just have a have something on the taskbar where you can see how many are there? Because right Andy. now, like like Bob just found out, you can just you can get tied up uh, way with keys and just keep opening, opening. You don't even have any way to there's nothing that says, yo, wait a minute, you just opened up a dozen of them. Andy, Andy, uh, Fred, uh, I'm going to just say right now, as far as I know, all you can do is rename them. But why don't you make that your homework assignment to research that to see, you know, because I know, yeah, the experiences that I've had with, with Linux myself, 
I set, tried to set something up for my mother-in-law. It was a total disaster with Linux. But anyhow, I tried to set up different uh, desktops, essentially different users. And I think the names appear at different users. Isn't that correct? The workspaces are actually different users? No, right. the workspace, they're all under the same login. They're the same login. I think I tried to set up the different users. My bad. So let's make it a homework assignment because that's, that seems like something that would be kind of neat, but I have no uh, solution for you. And let, let's move on, but make that a homework assignment for yourself and report back. Okay. He didn't say okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see if I can get to the. I figure out where. Open I... for questions. Uh, I just wanted to mention you were going to settings uh, for to see the system. Don't forget that if you right click in the start button, you get a list of useful things. One of which is system, and if you click on that item in the list, it'll take you straight to system in settings. Okay. Right. Make make that note in the chat box. Right click on the start button. Let me see if I can do it while I'm in this. Yeah, it brings up a menu. Yeah. And then you can go into settings or yeah, yeah, go yeah, look yeah, up yeah, higher. Yeah, that that that's that's the way you know we have been doing this for system, forever and system, ever. Yeah. system there yeah. takes okay. you yeah. to the one that you wanted in the right. settings. All right. No searching. Okay. Mm -hmm. No searching. Agreed. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I wanted to you know briefly just uh, go ahead and and mention that uh, that Patch Tuesday was last Tuesday, and. Uh, in Windows 11, you do have some options here to uh, turn off the, uh, get the latest update as soon as possible, as soon as they're available. I have that turned off because as I started out tonight with my complex structure of my computers with my wife using uh, XP in a virtual machine, um, it's very, very fragile. If I upgrade one thing, I'm afraid the other pieces are going to break. So I held off on upgrading it to the latest version of, of uh, Windows 11. But Drew corrected me this week and indicates that the latest version of Windows 11 is what, Drew? Uh, right now it's 2.2 H2, but it's, it's supposed to be um, 2.3 H2 is, is on the verge of coming out. And I actually have two Windows 11 computers. One of them is running 22H2, and the other one just got updated to 23H2, um, which adds some additional features to Windows. Well, when, but when keep I... your eyes out for that. Probably by into the next Patch Tuesday, they'll have uh, more and more people being distributed to the 23H2. Well, I, I, I hate doing workshops on Tuesday, whether it's Patch Tuesday or just Tuesday, because Microsoft has a nasty habit of restarting my computer when I'm not there. And if I walk away and I have things open, I forget to close them, uh, I come back, my machine probably won't even initially turn on. Uh, and that's a, that's a long story in and of itself. So um, let's briefly talk about, maybe not briefly, but uh, let me think of my next slide. Now, another thing that you can do is if you go into advanced options, you can customize your active hours and make never, sure that, that your that, that active never, hours are as big as possible. That never works for me either. <laughs> no? No. They, uh, Microsoft is known to ignore things. All right, more, more down-to-earth things now in terms of exploring Windows desktop, um, such as uh, hiding desktop icons, the start menu itself, uh, the apps, what it means to pin to a taskbar, pin to start, some folder options on the start page. So um, 
Let me let me go now to a desktop that has my uh, playing around with my Windows desktops, and I'm getting mixed up myself. Let's see if this is where I want to be. I think this is where I want to be. Okay, so I'm in I'm in Windows 11, and this is the, considered the desktop. Down here we have the taskbar. And if I have icons on the desktop and I want to hide them, I can right click on a blank area of the desktop, go to view, and I can uncheck show desktop icons. Okay, why would I want to do that? Well, if I had some personal stuff on there and I was doing a presentation, I might, you know, want to hide them. Or if, if I have a cluttered window, I just would want to hide them and not be embarrassed to say I have a cluttered desktop. <laughs> That's just one way to do it. And I'm sure there are other ways to do it. And one of the ways supposedly, and I don't think this really worked for me, Windows key, Windows logo key, and letter D. And no, it doesn't work for me. Does it work for anybody else? Windows and the letter D for desktop? No. That was on the list, but it didn't work for me. So if it, it just worked for me. It did? Yeah. And, Windows yeah, logo in D is show desktop. It should I minimize know. the active window and then restore the active window. Okay. Uh, it's not working for me. Okay. So yeah, if I hit menu in D, it brings me to my desktop. Okay. And if I hit it again, it brings me back to my Zoom box. Okay, so it, so it does work and it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, but Drew, does it hide the icons? Does it hide the icon? No, it's not hiding icons. It's right, it's the it's shortcut for it shows the desktop. Oh, show desktop. Right. Oh, yeah. You can go over here to the um, all the way on on the taskbar, all the way on the right. And, yes. And, and show desktop there too. So if right, you, but uh, the Windows D Windows D will minimize any act any windows and yes. just show you the desktop. But yes. all your icons right. are still visible. I right. thought yeah. Fred okay. was trying to oh, Fred was going to show hide all the icons. That, that that's my my bad my my bad my bad interpretation. Okay. So if I go away to the right now. And click it shows my desktop. Yep, that's what it shows. It doesn't hide the icons. My bad. Is that's that the boss is coming. Trick. <laughs> yes. Learn how to do that quickly. <laughs> you got a game up. Your boss is coming. That's what you do. Hi. You switch to you switch to desktop number two, which has your work screen on it. <laughs> okay. Now the start. Besides, I'm not going to do the normal start. I think you know people are using the uh, uh, the, the normal start like we, we are used to. But when we click on the start, uh, the screen that comes up is also called, I believe, the start page. And in Windows 10, to get to all your apps, it comes up right away. In Windows 11, there's an extra step. So it's back to where it used to be, all in alphabetical order. And if I wanted to... Um, if you want to go all the way down real quick, click on one of the letters. Yes. Okay. So if I go to L, it takes me right to the L's. And if I wanted to run Libre, Libre Writer... Oh, only because you're... Only because you're there, Fred? Yes. Libre, the uh, startup for the office, Libre Office, I did away with the logo. So I want to just put it in at the uh, on the startup piece. Say again? If you, if part of the command line uh, or launch your, your office, your app there. Where do you want me to go, Andy? The command line, right mouse on the, on whatever you click to start your LibreOffice. Uh, all right, let, let me just finish this and then we'll come back to what you're, what you're, what you're saying. Probably another way of doing the same thing. 
what what I would just want to indicate to you right here, I'm going to just do one little thing here, is to get LibreOffice on my taskbar from here on out. Once you run an app, if you right click on the app, you can pin it to the taskbar. So now okay. LibreOffice Libre Writer will always be there on the taskbar. Okay. Okay, now that's not what you wanted. No, but no, this is going to work even better now. Okay, close up your LibreOffice Writer. Uh, where is the X? It's hiding behind the Zoom controls. Okay. Uh, now so just slide the Zoom down. controls over to the left or the right. Yep, there you go. Okay. Uh, now, okay, good, got it. Good. Go down to the icon on your taskbar for the LibreOffice Writer. Right mouse and do the properties. Hold on, hold on. I lost, I lost my orientation there. Where am I? Go on desktop four. Okay. All right, where do you want to go? Okay, close up your LibreOffice there. Close up that window. No, the whole thing, top right. Yeah, my Zoom, okay. con my yeah. Zoom controls keep getting in the way. Okay, now at, down on your taskbar, right mouse on the LibreOffice Writer icon, yeah. do properties. Office Writer, do a right mouse and properties. Okay. Okay, now after the executable, the target, up there, go to the end of that line. No, no, don't click there. Yep. I just moved oh, it over. I just moved it okay, over. Okay, on the highlighting. Just click. click At the end of the line. End of the line. End of the line. Hit your end key. Face. Enter. Now hit the end key. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm at the end of the line. With the right arrow key. Yeah, I'm at the end of the line. Before the quotes. Okay. Uh, after the quote. After the quote? Yeah. Space, hyphen, or dash, and then all one word, no logo, N-O-L-O-G-O. -O -O. Okay, click your okie dokie. Okay, so apply or okay, no. Right, now start, now click on your taskbar icon. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's better. Okay. It's that much quicker. Gotcha. It it doesn't it doesn't throw up the Libra the whole Libra Office thing. Okay. It's a fraction of a second, but it works for all the Libra Office apps, and it does make a difference. Okay. okay. All Good right. Tip. I do not use Libra Office for this. Um, what I call uh, cumbersome uh, series of icons at the top, but that's up to you guys. But thank you anyhow. <laughs> okay. Um, where was I? Oh, okay. We can pin to start, but Pin to start means you know the the app will appear in here um, and not on your taskbar. Uh, if you're really going to use a program pretty consistently, I like it on the on the taskbar. The um, thing you have to keep in mind now with with these, if you right click on these and you choose uninstall. It will actually uninstall it. Uh, it it, it uh, just doesn't remove it from here. To get it away from here, you would unpin it from start. But if you click on an uninstall, it will actually go through the process of uninstalling it. Now, I don't know how good of a job Windows 11 does with uninstall. I've used uh, for a year or more now, I've used Revo, uninstaller, uh, I dappled a little bit with Absolute Uninstaller. They do a thorough, thorough job of uninstalling. Uh, it goes through a slower process, 
but I think it goes through a more thorough process with things that are in the registry, which we all hate. The right mouse click and you have the options of pinning it to the taskbar as well. And there are some apps that you have to run as administrator. So the right mouse click is you know, what I live by when I come into a new program and I don't know what it does. I have an icon. Uh, the first thing I do is I start right mouse clicking, right mouse clicking, right mouse clicking. If you right mouse click in a blank area of the start menu, you can go to start settings. And the start settings um, have some options here, which might be of some interest to you. And one of them is folder folders. Folders appear on the start next to the power button. So if I want to put, um, Let's say if I wanted to put my network. Hello. Uh, it's not responding. Well, let's try Click on the button itself. On the button. On itself. the right hand side. 